Hey, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. Bitcoin continues to sustain a price above $10,000 and the mainstream media is going crazy. I want you to watch this clip and realize where we are in this thing. This is only the beginning. We are very early. This thing has the potential to get a whole lot bigger. You're gonna see what I'm talking about. Watch the clip. Then we're going to discuss the magnitude of what we're witnessing happening right before our eyes. How's that for a graphic? Uh, Bitcoin's boom time continues back above 10,000. Get this. If you're not paying attention, you probably should be. Bitcoin is now up 44% this year. So, Tim, we went from like zero to 20,000, back to 4,000, now back to 10,000. Is anything different this time around. I think what's different is, first of all, you've shaken out a lot of weak players. You've shaken out a lot of the momentum. You've certainly gone further down the road in terms of institutional uh, you know, follow through. You've certainly had major banks in the world talk about their own blockchain platforms. You've had a dynamic where money's become freer than free. Gold's been rallying. Why shouldn't Bitcoin be rallying? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think that last part, if you talk about a Fed just gone nuts as Guy thinks it has, or all, all the central banks going nuts, I mean, that's part of the bull case for Bitcoin, plus uh, institutional interest as well. Yeah, but l listen, so we got rates lower, we got gold up, we got utilities up, we got Bitcoin up, so it's all acting like safe haven. That just takes me back to the MAGA trade. What's going on there that just seems very bifurcated in this market where they're doing that heavy lifting, but these other things that we identify as safe haven assets have really perked up Possible in 2020. Possible coronavirus impact here. I know a lot of the buyers come from that part of the world, and you wonder if they're looking to protect their money, maybe hiding it in Bitcoin. Perhaps. But I do think, to Karen's point, I, mean, I believe that in a world where central bankers are tripping over themselves to devalue their currency, Bitcoin wins. In the world of fiat currencies, Bitcoin is the victor, Brian. And, well, it certainly has been, a 44% this year. This is so vastly different than the CNBC that we've been seeing in Bitcoin's 11 years. I don't know about you, I never thought I'd see the day on CNBC Fast Money where all five anchors are bullish on Bitcoin. What the hell? I already hear you guys. Top indicator. Hey, top indicator. Hey, Altcoin Daily, that's a top indicator. Time to sell. CNBC's bullish. I already hear you guys. I already see the comments. Guys, you're missing the bigger picture here. Yes, it could be a, a short-term top indicator. True, but the bigger picture here is that the mainstream media anchors are now accepting of Bitcoin. They're talking about it regularly. They're educating people. They're normalizing it to the public. This is a big shift in what normally happens with Bitcoin that we've seen every other cycle. This is a huge net positive. There's going to come a time where every single person understands what Bitcoin is. Everybody's going to understand the argument. Everybody's eventually going to have a wallet. But that day is not today. That day has yet to come. We're still very early in this thing, and I hope you see what I'm talking about. Now, to go further, hey, Altcoin Daily, what about the altcoins? Hey, alt hey, Bitcoin Daily, what about the altcoins? The altcoins are pumping. I'm sure you noticed. Yeah, I did notice. That's awesome. That's great the altcoins are pumping. I'm happy to see that. It's really great if you're a, a trader. This is my opinion, guys, and Coin Codex illustrates this very well. Um, first of all, it is my opinion, and this might piss you off, it is my opinion that Bitcoin is hard money, Bitcoin is what's revolutionary, and altcoins, although you can make a lot of money with them, and they're, they're great to speculate on, it's not hard money. And it's great that they're pumping, but I'm still waiting for a trend change, because even though XRP and Bcash are doing really well this year, since all-time highs, they're still 92 89% down from all-time highs, so that's not a trend change. Bitcoin, still 50% down, but at least we've seen that trend change. Um, and I just hope, um, first of all, if you have a different opinion on me about altcoins, that's great. I think everybody should not try and have the same opinion that I do. But even if you think that you've picked out the altcoins that are going to succeed, maybe like XRP or ETH or Cardano or Litecoin or whatever, I just hope you understand that Bitcoin is king. It's liquidity and network effect, you know, topple everything else combined. And Bitcoin is here to stay. 
and Bitcoin for the time being is going to remain number one. So you don't want to get caught um, without your Bitcoin, basically. And um, I guess to conclude, I tweeted this out just uh, an hour or two ago. I said, because I saw this video, I said, my thesis is this, as the bull market matures, altcoins with the biggest marketing budgets will pump the hardest. And I'll, I'll play you about 10 seconds of this video. This is out of the Tron office. Um, this is their uh, little fun video they did for Wink. I'm sitting on the drone as I'm making some drone now. I'm paying my bills, but I'm still getting thrills because I'm on these dice on Wink all night. Even when you get dumped, well, you're still making drone because here comes the drops now, divvy them up because the don't stop when the players are loved You got your BTT and your BNB Plus your TRX and multi-currency Next curse wank Imagine if Bitcoin had a marketing team, right? And by the way, guys, we are media partners for this Bitcoin conference going on um, about a couple weeks, February 20th and 23rd in Vegas, unconfiscatable. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that we are media partners with the likes of Cointelegraph, AMB Crypto, Bitcoin for Girls, and a bunch of other things I haven't really heard of. Um, World Crypto Network, I've heard of that. And a bunch of, um, you know, we put our name, we were happy to be, you know, have our name as part of this conference um, just because I saw a video of what they did last year and it looks really good. So February 20th through 23rd, this is the conference you wanna be at. Make sure you tell them Altcoin Daily sent you. Andrew Yang has dropped out of the Democratic race. The only candidate willing to openly discuss cryptocurrency has dropped out. I tweeted this. Yang can now finally talk specifically about Bitcoin and not just blockchain. Because you know he kept his answers pretty pc um, while he was on the campaign trail, but hopefully now he can mention Bitcoin by name and just whatever he thinks. I'm not really sure specifically what he thinks other than the fact he wanted to kind of have clear regulations, which I liked. Taking a look at the price of Bitcoin, we are near yearly highs, 10,330. This is what I like to see. Um, looks like a little bull flag right here. What do you think? And then finally, I want to end this video asking you, what is your elevator pitch for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? I like this video. This was part of a debate Eric Voorhees had many years ago with Peter uh, Schiff. And this was um, just a, a two minute elevator pitch. This is great to say if somebody asks you why you like Bitcoin. Somebody asks me why I like Bitcoin. I usually say things well like, Bitcoin is unprintable, so it's undebasable, it's unconfiscatable, it is permissionless, unlike every single other type of, you know, you can't transact with anybody without going through a permissioned system. And you're probably fine if you live in America, we just all Venmo each other the same five bucks. But if you wanted to, if you ever had any problems, you better believe the government and your bank, which is basically government's, you know, little buddy, they're gonna stop you. and. Say you lived in China and you wanted to get out of China, but you know, the government wasn't allowing you to move your wealth. Well, Bitcoin fixes this. Anyways, watch this video. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Bitcoin cannot be debased. It cannot be debased and it is now competing with the incumbent currency, US dollar fiat, which not only can be debased, but exists in a state of perpetual institutionalized debasement. This dynamic will encourage a virtuous cycle in which rational actors at the margins decide to hold the non-decaying form of money to the exclusion of that which decays. This is the primary reason gold itself has retained its position in society. It cannot be debased by governments either. When comparing two potential monetary alternatives, the one which is the hardest to debase is probably the one you should prefer, other factors being equal. But here the other factors aren't equal. One of them can also be transferred anywhere on earth between any two people instantly at near zero cost and can't be shut down or censored. How's that for intrinsic value? But ignore for a moment every interesting advantage of Bitcoin. 
Ignore the ease with which one can send it. Ignore the censorship resistance. Ignore the universality, the fungibility, and the divisibility. Ignore the impossibility of counterfeit. True, Bitcoin surpasses US dollar fiat in all of these, but ignore those for a moment. Focus purely on the fact, the mathematical fact, that Bitcoin cannot be debased no matter how many guns a government wields, no matter how much propaganda it spews, or innocent people it imprisons. It does not matter how many meetings the Federal Reserve holds in its halls of chiseled marble. Every year, fiat oozes from the sewer of state. As consequence, it has lost 98% of its value in the past 100 years. How foolish does one need to be to hold it over the next 100? Compared to gold, Bitcoin provides an efficient digital apparatus of payment and exchange that can enable commerce rather than hinder it. But more importantly, compared to fiat, Bitcoin bestows a gift for which humanity will grow increasingly hungry, an open, honest financial system that is under the control of no man, committee, or nation. Bitcoin will find its way into every tributary of economic activity, and with this gradual adoption, Bitcoin will come to replace fiat as the preferred money and medium of exchange for all sovereign people on Earth.